Shalom everybody and welcome back. We're now the Shabbat after Purim and what an amazing Purim it was. May we merit to draw the Simcha of this amazing Purim to the whole year and from Simcha through Simcha come out of our exile. Ki Simcha Tetzel. So following Purim is this amazing Shabbat called Shabbat Para, which also this year, because it's a leap year, falls on Parshat Tzav. Parshat Tzav continues in follow-up to Parshat Vayikra to enumerate the guidelines and detail, details of sacrifices, including the Korban Toda. Korban Toda, which is the Thanksgiving offering, okay, where four types of people have to give this offering. Arba'a, Tzichim Lohodot, four types of people were in four different scenarios of danger when coming out of that danger they give this thanksgiving offering to Hashem to give thanks for the miracle that occurred right the first group is those who were in the desert and came out number two those who were in incarcerated in jail and came out number three those who were in the desert and number uh, sorry uh, those who were uh, sick deathly ill and came out from being bedridden and number four are those who came out of the sea safely by ship okay and also the korban toda is very unique in that it has 40 uh, loaves of bread four types of bread 10 of each okay and uh, in totaling 40. one is called <clears throat> chalat matzot two is called rekikin three is called Murbechet, and the four is actual chametz, which is very strange because it's forbidden to bring any any offering that has leavening agents in it. The chametz, all bread, all meal offerings were matzah, no chametz, no souring, no yeast, nothing. It was just pure bread and water and oil, etc., and some salt, and that's it. And here chametz is is taken in. So if no sin goes into the details showing the depth of all these details of the Korban Toda and the makeup of it, showing you how powerful and far-reaching it is to be happy and to give thanks. So first of all, these four that he mentions, of the four types of people who actually have to physically give this Korban Toda on a, on a more personal level, reflect different scenarios. You have people who feel like they're in a the desert, people that are lost spiritually, and they feel like they're getting nowhere in life. They're just walking and walking and walking in this desert. And they keep on asking Hashem, help me to find their way out. So when a person finally reaches out, okay, he's full of thanksgiving and joy. So it's a scenario that we want to come out of. And giving thanks is the result, okay? But needed for that also, a prerequisite is a person has to put some minimal input of being bitchazik, strengthening himself. So because he strengthens himself not to give up, and he comes out of his spiritual desert, he gives thanks. Number two, the person who feels like he's in jail. It's not like now he doesn't know where he's going. He feels like he's stuck. They're not letting him advance. I want to advance, and they're preventing me. There's like a, a personal experience of feeling you, like you're in jail. I can't do anything. I can't get, I can't do this. Every time I try to do something, there's always obstacles, and it gets me so frustrated. I just want to drop everything. So in a way, a person feels like he's in jail. Because whatever he tries to do, no, stay here, you can't do this. A person feels so many obstacles in his pursuit of trying to do good. When he comes out of that also, there's a Thanksgiving offering and needed to survive that scenario, a person needs to mitchazek, strengthen himself with joy. Number three, a person is sick, but spiritually sick. He feels so like a sick person who's out of it and his head is groggy and blogged and everything is like uh, dreamy and, and clouded. And he feels so sick and so confused. It's not like the first two where you don't know where you're going or you know what to do, but they're not letting you. Here, when you're sick, you feel mamash. You feel literally like, I don't know what to do even. I can't even think straight, think clearly. And even then, a person has to strengthen himself not to fall into sadness. And if when he comes out, he has to give thanks. And finally, four, which is really a scary type, is those who go in the sea, and like it says in the Psalm 107 of Tehillim, where it's learned out that these four types of people have to give out thanks, it says there in describing the danger 
of those who are at sea, Yalu Shamaim, Yerdu Tehomot. The the, the 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 waves of the sea lift up the ship, yeah, up to the heavens, as a, like an, ex, an exaggeration, but almost up to the heavens, and then the, the 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 wave the waves, the tide of waves thrust down the ship, Yerdu Tehomot, down to the depths. And that does that's the time when a person feels that the crazy struggle in serving Hashem and trying to come close to Hashem, that he has times and moments where he's spiritually on a high, flying, and everything's amazing, and then the next moment, crash, down to the depths. He'd rather not be here. And in that scenario, which is the scariest one, the most difficult one, a person also has to be chazik himself with joy in order not to despair, and eventually to come out and to give thanks, okay? Rav Nosson goes into also the detail. Why 10 breads? Of all the four types of bread, why 10 each? She says the number 10 is very special in Judaism. Very special in Torah. Besides that you have the 10 commandments, right? The 10 utterances of the creation of the world. The 10 spherot, which Hashem used in the building blocks of the creation of the 10 utterances, okay? And the 10 levels of holiness in the Holy Land. The number 10... The ten levels of holiness in the temple, in the Beit in the, in the Beit Hamikdash, ten also, Rav Nosson explains, are the ten types of melody. The Gemara and Psachim, and the Zohar and Tikkun Zohar and the Midrash, express that King David, when composing the Book of Psalms, which is meant to express the inner like, emotions of every Jew in the world, he used him and the Tzadikim who helped him compose the Book of Psalms. They used 10 types of melody, Asara, Mine, Negina. And these 10 types of melody are actually a healing power to heal every Jew, no matter how low he's fallen, to give him that light of joy to get back on his feet and to start again and to continue in life. Okay? So the number 10, Rav Nosen writes and explains, is, is, the, is representing the 10 types of song which are needed in the Thanksgiving process. Why we specifically have 10 types of each of the four types of bread is in order to activate joy. Okay, ten types of melody, that's why ten types of bread. So now he goes into also the details of the four types of bread. The first one is called Chala Matzah. Chala is, you know, the, the Chala is what we say you have to take off Chala. When you're baking bread, making dough, there's a minimum amount of dough needed or flour needed in order to take off what's called Chala. And it's hinted to in the word chala itself. Chala is eight, chet, lamed is thirty, that's thirty-eight, plus five hey is five, forty-three. Forty-three, the Gemara says, mem gimel beitzim. Forty-three eggs is the amount of volume of flour minimum which requires what's called hafrashat chala according to the Torah. We take off take off chala with a bracha. Okay? Today we burn it, and the time of the temple was given to the Kohanim. Okay, Chala. So now, Chala, Gam, it's Mem Gimel. Mem Gimel also forms a word called Gam. And Rav Nosson explains that Gam is related to the word Zot. And in the Kabbalah, Zot, which is related to Gam, also this, also this, Gam Zot, it's an expression which is tied together, refers to what's called Malchut. And he explains, Rav Nosson, based on Rabbi Nachman's teachings, Lesson 24, that the initial stage of joy to be activated is that when a person works on being happy and works on being mitchazik, strengthening himself, even when it's crazy and difficult, so he elevates the malchut from the evil forces. So this is represented on these first 10 types, the first 10 loaves of the first type of bread called chalat matzah, indicating that malchut has been the kingship of Hashem has been elevated from the evil forces because of joy. Okay? Second stage is the second group of ten breads called Rekikin. Rakik, Rav Nosson explains, is related in grammar, in grammar to word Lehadek, which means to flatten. You flatten out somebody. You flatten out your enemy. Your enemy. That's with the legs. You step on them and trample them. Rekik are like flat loaves. They're called Rekikin because they were very thin. Rekik, okay? These two, by the way, are matzah, including the third one coming up, Mubechet. These 30 breads are matzah, not chametz, okay? So Rekikin, he says, is what happens when a person succeeds through his joy to elevate malchut 
the kingship of God which is trapped in exile, the divine presence which is trapped in exile to lift it up through joy. The next stage is a person, so to speak, flattens out the enemies. He cuts out, he's able to rakik. That's the next stage of flattening out the legs, that the legs have a spiritual power, and that the spiritual legs of a Jew, the spiritual legs of his joy, due to his joy, the mitzvahs that he's doing now with joy, they flatten out the enemies. That's the idea of Rekikim. Third is called Morbechet. Morbechet were boiled, like 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 type of don't like bagels in a sense, but matzah, matzah bagels, <laughs> okay. And Morbechet is a lot of oil, and it's boiled in oil, and that connotes the idea of the brain, because the brain is compared to a nerdalik, a flame that's burning with oil. The mind is like burning using the fluids of the body. The bodily fuel fluids fuel like shaman, like oil, f- fueling a, 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 a candle, a, a, a flame. The brain also now is now inflamed with the fluids of the body. And the idea of Morbechet is that once you do these two stages of elevating the Malchut from exile through joy, and then flattening out the enemies, Rekikim, then you merit to have a grasp of intellect, of godliness. Your mind now is in the, in the mode, in the proper mode to receive divine wisdom and divine intellect. That's the idea of Murbechet. It's also the words of Mevarech, blessed. Because the main blessing Rabbi Nachman teaches is the blessing of intellect. That's the main blessing of life, is Birkat HaSechem. Okay? All this is a result of joy, of being mitchazek, strengthening yourself and doing being joyous. Okay? Once all three are done, a person is ready for the fourth level of chametz. Chametz, on one hand, for Pesach, is totally forbidden. Chametz indicates an admixture of evil and good, because it's not pure bread. It's bread mixed in with air pockets due to waiting. Chametz, something became soured. It also refers to the mind becoming soured. And you would think that the souring of the mind is not something positive. However... The souring of the mind is a stage in life that every Jew has to go through and has to pass through it. That your mind is being soured with all types of bad thoughts, all types of, of uh, negative thoughts, thoughts of futility and failure and setbacks, and you're just waiting and you feel, God forbid, yeush, you feel to give up, you feel that hopeless, God forbid. That specifically there, a person has to hold on and pass this test of holding on with emuna and joy that things are going to work out in the end. Even though I'm going through this stage of waiting and waiting and setbacks. This is the idea of chametz. Chametz on one hand is danger zone, but on the other hand it's even higher than matzah because it shows a person's uh, faculty of power and willpower to hold on while being set upon with a lot of fermentation from the evil side, fermentation of the thoughts, fermentation of negative thoughts, and being able to hold on. The goal of the first three, matzot, is to get to the chametz and to pass it. And once you pass it, then you really reach the high level of the joy. And that's why it's included in the four types of bread offering with, offered with the Thanksgiving offering. Now, amazingly, this fourth category of chametz fits in perfectly with parashat para. This parashat para, it says about it, that it's, it's impossible to understand. King Solomon said about the para, about the red heifer, because the, the, the red heifer is something which is unexplainable. It makes pure the impure, and it makes pure the impure. That makes pure the impure, I can understand, because it was sprinkled upon people who came in contact with a, a dead corpse. They had too much met on them, so they were sprinkled water with, 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 mixed with the ashes of the red heifer, was sprinkled on them in a certain procedure on the third day, on the seventh day, and then they would be pure to be able to enter the, the holy temple in the New Shalim, the Beit HaMikdash. But the person, the Kohanim preparing the, the red heifer formula, the, all the stages, they became impure. They were pure and made them impure. So this concept of making pure impure, it, it goes against rationale. If the whole idea of this korban, this, this uh, sorry, the, par- the para, is to make purification, so why make others impure? Does it make sense? Okay? So that's why, that's why it's considered a, a type of law, a type of mitzvah, which is beyond human comprehension. Even though 
their true reality is all mitzvot are beyond human comprehension. Nevertheless, Hashem in the Torah gives reasons for many of the mitzvot. Okay? Many of the mitzvot have a reason. Like tefillin as a mitzvot, that we should remember our leaving Egypt. Okay? The, the, the three festivals, Pesach, Sukkot, Shavuot, they, they have a, a significance to commemorate our leaving Egypt, the receiving of the Torah, how we're encamped of the clouds. Okay? Tzitzit also has a purpose to look at the strings and you remember the, all the other mitzvot. Okay, Yom Kippur's atonement. Every mitzvah we do, the Torah allows us to understand. When you come to the para, Red Heifer, we don't understand. And the Red Heifer, showing that we don't understand, also begins to show that even all the mitzvot which are rational, which are rationalized by the Torah, the real deal is that even they can understand. You try to dig deep into the mitzvah and understanding them, you also reach a level, wow, I've reached a point where I can't understand it, that's how deep it is. And that's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants this level, which is called Tachrit Ayedi'a Asheloneda. The goal of knowledge is to know that we don't know. The goal of learning, you see, why am I learning? Why, if, if now the goal is not to know, so why waste my time opening books? Let me just stay already in ignoramus and not open no Talmud, no Mishnayot, no Shulchan Aruch, no Chumash, no Zohar, no Kabbalah, no Hasidut, nothing. Let me stay ignoramus, and that way I know that I don't know. <laughs> no, the people who truly don't know are those who exercise their mind capacity at the fullest, learning Torah at the maximum they can, and from that standpoint, to realize how much they don't know. Because that's the beauty of the Torah. The more you enter the realm, the domain of the Torah, the more you begin to see how endless it is, how much there is out there that you don't even know, you haven't even touched upon in life. This is the significance of the para. Now, the para did what? The ashes of the red heifer did what? It purified from the worst, ex the worst impurities. To show us also that when a person exercises this faculty of Torah com combined with emuna that I don't know, I just believe that I believe in this mitzvah even though I can't understand it. This, com this combination of knowing and not knowing, which is another definition for emuna, this is what can purify the people in the worst, worst scenarios. It's this level of the Torah, reaching this level of Torah and emuna which can purify a person. Even the worst sins a person may have done, if he exercises the faculty of one hand learning Torah, and then the second hand, which is humility, really, of believing and knowing that I don't know, and thus having a muna, this combination together is what purifies Am Yisrael. That's why Parshat Para comes as a result of Purim, because the Simcha of Purim like we saw, the mal of the four levels of the bread in the Korban Torah, lifting up the Malchut, and then smashing our enemy, uh, the, the evil forces of defeat, if you want to say, and then intellect, and then chametz, okay? It's to come to this level of purity. Chametz, the goal of the chametz, and the goal of the paraduma have a similar, similar denomination, they have a common factor, that both are meant to make pure. Okay, the, the Korban... The Korban Toda is to make pure. It's giving thanks. And this is purifying a person because he's giving thanks that he came out of the danger. What's left for him is to offer a, a thank you to Hashem, which Hashem is waiting for. And that completes the whole, the whole, whole ball game. The whole scenario that Hashem set the person a danger in the first place was to come out and to give thanks. Can you believe that? The reason why a person was in danger is in order to come to joy and to give thanks to Hashem. And the Paraduma also is a result of that because it's now reaching the goal of knowledge and not knowing, this is a level of purity that has re re resulted in simcha. Why, this is why it follows Purim, okay? And now the final question, why a cow? <laughs> a para, even though it's a chok and we can't understand it, but there's something you can learn. Just like a para knows nothing, it doesn't have a brain. The cow, wherever you tell it to go, you lead it, in the, the, you lead it like a, it goes, follows you blindly, right? It's a cow, it's an animal. So to a person, when it comes to these areas of Torah wisdom which are beyond his grasp, he has to do only one thing, to be like a cow, make himself like a behema, and to have simple emuna. And this combination of emuna and Torah is what purifies a person. 
Shabbat Shalom, and may we be totally purified and have a new beginning after this Shabbat Parah, a new purification. Shabbat Shalom.